Hey everybody, welcome to today's live stream. We're gonna do a little bit of resin casting today and we're gonna be using some funky pods to dunk. Where's the, where's the full size one that I was gonna show? There it is. So we have, I can't, I can't remember what these ones are called. They, I, it's some sort of a pod that I got sent. And then these are the sweet gum pods. So we're gonna do a couple of batches of pen blanks. Uh, I was kind of sifting through my pile of stuff and I thought, ah, oh, we haven't done this yet. So let's do these things. So I hope everybody's doing good today. Uh, it's Friday, of course. Uh, I am very grateful because we're finally getting a respite from the smoke in this area. Yesterday, it was so horrible. I mean, like the, the, the index thing, we were looking at it and it was like above 300, which is like, you're gonna die if you go outside. So today is wonderfully clear and I actually got to go running today. So uh, anyway, I hope everybody else is doing good. I know there's stuff going on all over the place between the fires and the hurricanes and who knows what else. Uh, hope everybody's staying safe and healthy out there. So uh, anyway, let's see, we got a lot of people here already. We got Doug and Flaming Turner, Mike and Jim and Kim, Jim and Kim. Mike McEwen's here, how's it going buddy? And let's see here, who else? Melvin's here and Jeff. So we got some people here. Uh, I, I think it'll be pretty fun today. I, I like doing these kind of, they're kind of like pine cones. I like doing that type of thing. They're pretty simple, um, not a lot to it. You can see that I have these things in the oven right now. Uh, I just wanted to, these are, I actually, I've had these things forever. Uh, and I stabilized them quite a while ago. So they are stabilized. Um, I didn't need to like, you know, go like with the full drying it out because they, do, they weren't holding moisture really. Um, but I like to warm things up and just flash off any surface moisture that may be on there. Uh, especially important for people that are in humid areas. Uh, if you're gonna be tossing stuff in resin, um, chances are there's probably, even if, even if they're in a Ziploc bag, um, chances are there's probably a little bit of surface moisture on there. If you just heat them up a little bit, that stuff goes away and you won't have any problems, especially with Lumalite Clear. So let's see here. It is Friday. Yes. This is actually my Monday because yesterday we had our day off, which was, it was like a horrible day off because we couldn't do anything. <laughs> you couldn't go outside. Uh, we actually did go out, but man, it was horrible. Just like in my truck, like with the whole face mask thing right now, I was like, man, I just want to wear my face mask all the time. Cause like even in my truck, it wasn't filtering anything out. I need to get a Tesla. They have like a biohazard mode with their filtration in them. <laughs> That's what we need here. It's ugh, horrible. It's like, it's literally like, it's like if you walked in, so, you know, I live in Nevada in the casinos, uh, you know, used to be extremely smoky. There was like no non-smoking section. So you, you would walk into a casino and it was just like cigarette smoke everywhere. That's basically like just walking outside. Uh, obviously not cigarette smoke, but just smoky. <sighs> so bald cypress. I'm not sure what those, I'm not sure what those pods were. Um, I got them sent to me by Sean Rubino a long, like, I'm going to say like five, five or six years ago, maybe. <laughs> maybe more, I don't know. Uh, he sent them a long time ago. I did cast them a little while ago uh, and they are really cool because all of the negative spaces in these things get filled up with resin. And so you can imagine it's a pretty cool uh, casting material. And then the sweet gum pods, um, they are really cool. Um, but these things, let me, let me switch to this other camera real quick. <clears throat> these things have so many little, uh, and Doug mentioned it in my post on Instagram, you see all these things, they're little holes, and these things are, are really tough to, to not have any voids in the, in the blanks in the end. Um, so I'm gonna kinda go through a couple of things that you can do to minimize that. I'm, I'm not even gonna say that you're gonna get rid of it entirely, usually, um, but there are a few things that you can do. So first thing I wanna mention about the sweet gum pods, let me just pull this thing out. Uh, and I've decided, <laughs> I don't like the, two camera views much. Um, it, it kind of is distracting, I, I think, just watching the replays. And the other problem is, is that sometimes they kind of get in the way and they look funky, especially if I'm trying to pull, uh, pull video in uh, to compile it with something else. It just, it makes it weird. So I'm just gonna be going with this view. This is a little bit you know, wider angle. You can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, and it's really not even a bad angle for, for seeing the casting stuff, but I also like this one. 
um, because it's directly above you can really see I can really hold up and it, and it focuses well so I think we're just going to be going with those two views from now on it just seems like it works a little bit better um, so uh, what do we got here let's let's just kind of aim this this way so what I have here is and I have a few pine cones because I didn't have a whole lot of these um, uh, sweet gum pods but this is what they look like normal is they're they're a full you know round thing and what I've done is I've cut them. Um, this is one of the first things that you can do to help minimize that air pocket issue. Um, you still need to make sure that you're, you know, trying to like fill, like move these things around and try and get all those little holes filled. So you got to be a little bit careful with this. This is not a bad one to go with a slow setting resin um, and really let it, you know, have a lot of working time to kind of move that around and make sure that you've gotten all those little things filled, no air bubbles. Um, and what I want to show you guys is how I cut these because they're, you know, you can imagine trying to cut this thing on a bandsaw <laughs> is not easy. And so what's, what I've actually done, I'm going to toss the rest of this thing back in the oven here so these things don't cool off much. What I actually use is number one, I have a, I forgot to bring my thing over. I forgot my thingy. Uh, most of you guys can probably just kind of imagine this, but, um, I wanted to show you what I use is a kind of a it's not fully zero clearance but I have a little sled that I made for the bandsaw and it's it's just like a cross cut sled it's got a little fence here it's not zero clearance but it's a lot closer than the throat plate on the saw and I wouldn't even I would even recommend you know the, the smallest throat um, that you can have you can make a zero clearance one you can easily just take a piece of wood stick a you know screw down another piece for a fence and then just make a cut in and you've got a zero clearance on your bandsaw um, but what i do here let's just put this thing down is i actually use aluminum honeycomb <laughs> this is a really odd use for it but because these things are so spiky it's not like you can clamp it i really wouldn't recommend holding this thing with your fingers that would be a really dumb idea so because they have little spikes the honeycomb actually can kind of hold this and you actually you want to keep this thing down on the on the bottom uh, and i just basically kind of give it a good amount of pressure but this keeps my hands away from the blade and so you can just you know cross cut the thing through uh, you still have to kind of watch out bandsaws tend to they, they can kind of grab onto round things and stuff so you really want to make sure this thing's kind of secure but for the most part as long as this thing can't really spin around too much uh, it's a really easy way to cut something like this so just wanted to share that at the beginning uh, if you do need to cut these things uh, that is the best way that i've found i'm sure there's other ways you know like you could hot glue them to something um, then you got to take the hot glue off though unfortunately um, there's different ways you could do it it might be a little easier if you had a um, like a scroll saw might be a little easier to use than this i don't know uh, I, like I said, the way that I do it works pretty darn well though. So, um, I'm going to keep this one. I, I cut the whole tray, but I'm actually going to keep one of these full, um, because I want to kind of show you some tips, uh, to, if you don't, um, you know, if you don't decide to cut them, um, kind of how to fix it or, you know, like the best way I know of to, to kind of fill in those holes. So let's see here. What do we got going on in the chat here? Chris is here now, and Philip, and Mert's here, Bailey. Nice. Awesome. People are coming in. Dustin's here. Ray's here. Nice. And Bert? Cool. Yak's here. Man, you guys snuck up on me while I was explaining stuff. So uh, basically what we're going to do is two, two batches of six pen blanks today. All right. So this is my, I call this my six blank mold. Uh, it's about six by five, <clears throat> excuse me, six by, see the smoke. I've been breathing smoke for like a month at this point and my throat is just messed up, but um, six, six inches by five inches and you can cut six blanks out of this thing. Uh, works pretty good. HDPE. So we're going to do two batches. We're going to do one with the, I'm just going to call these things. They look like little bucky balls or something like that. We're going to do one batch of these. I, got, I know I have enough of those to fill up a six blank. And then we're going to do another, uh, another batch of six. Problem is, I'm not sure if we have enough of just the sweet gum pods. So we'll, we'll toss those in first. But I also have these little uh, cypress cones or spruce. I don't know, something. Some little mini pine cones to kind of fill up some space if we need to. 
Um, so two rounds today, you guys know the drill. Um, super chatters get to pick some colors. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna toss that guy, actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna spray it with a little bit, just, just quickly, lightly spray it with a little bit of stoner so the thing just pops right out. Pretty much falls out when we demold it. Just a couple squirts, fairly lightly. Get that thing going in the oven. And so, like I said, super chats get to pick some colors. And I think we'll just probably go with, you know, four or five, whatever, however many people want to super chat. Uh, and we'll just throw some colors at this thing. I'm, I'm kind of, it was tough. I was trying to figure out what to do today. And there was, there's a lot of things that I was like, oh, that would be cool, but it'd be like non-interactive at all. So I wanted to make a bunch of pen blanks, put a bunch of colors together and see what we get. Uh, while we're kind of waiting around here, I want to kind of show you guys a couple things. So just a reminder, tomorrow is the virtual craft festival. Uh, and I'll be going on at 3 p.m. We're going to turn a pen. And uh, what I'm going to do is it's going to be kind of, I'm going to walk through the pen turning process, basically, tomorrow. Uh, kind of try to quickly, I know I only have an hour, but I think I should be able to kind of give you guys the rundown. Most of you guys know how to turn a pen, but I thought, you know, there's probably some people out there who don't necessarily know how to turn a pen. So uh, kind of a pen turning 101, we'll just uh, kind of go through that, and I'm just going to make a Sierra blank. Uh, and what I'm going to turn is the blank that I'm using is one of the packing material ones, the newer the ones we just did, one of the packing cool, you know, color swirly packing material blanks. Uh, I thought that would be kind of fun. It's a simple, you know, simple one for, for kind of new pen turners. I like the Sierra, it's not a Sierra, it's a Virage, but um, similar to a Sierra with, with just the single blank. I actually think those are better than slim lines um, for beginners. It's a single blank, um, it's a little bit bigger, um, and I just find the kits are so much nicer than slim lines. So let's see here. Mm -hmm. Is Jen here? Nice. Sweet. So, uh, and actually, let's see here. Let me, I'm going to go get the link. If you guys want to see the schedule. Is this that one? Yeah, that's that one. So if you guys want to see the schedule for the virtual craft festival there's the link to it um, it's going to be going i think it starts i think it's the same uh, thing as last time uh, i think it's beginning at 2 a.m pacific time uh, if you're in the u.s it's i don't know what time that is in british whatever the B, british time um, it's like in the afternoon i think but so for, for everybody like that's in the u.s u.s pacific time starting at 2 a.m. and then it's going until I think I want to say 6 p.m. maybe 7 um, and there's like 16 people doing all kinds of different stuff we've got some returners I'm a returner obviously uh, but we have a whole slew of new people so it's going to be a really fun one tomorrow again um, just a couple that I can think of that off the top of my head that I know of uh, so Re Rebecca de Groot is going to be doing something I'm not sure entirely sure what she's doing um, but she always does really cool stuff. Andy Berkey is going to do one. I can't, you don't want to miss that, either of those guys. I'm trying to think, who else is doing it? The Beard's going to be there. Uh, let's see here. Dale with Maple Tree. Uh, SK Crafts. Um, oh, uh, let's see here. Marcy with... Um, what is her thing? The She does resin casting stuff, like resin art. I can't think of her, her channel offhand. And I think they actually put the wrong YouTube <laughs> Oops. Uh, link. Oh, and Ken Moon's going to be right after me. So, and then Carl and everybody. So, it's going to be pretty sweet. So, we got Melvin's in there. We're going to do a little blurple for, for Melvin. Let's see here. No, it is not a virtual crap festival, Billy. It's a craft festival. We're all crafty people. Jeez. That is not very, that is not very cool. All right, so we got one color. Any more takers? If not, I'm going to pick up some colors here. I'm going to pick my own. 
Um, so let's we're gonna do the bucky balls first because I know we got a full amount of those six pen blanks. Uh, oh, the other thing is that I wanted to mention. Um, so if you haven't seen the X-wing sphere video, definitely go check it out. And uh, it comes with a base as well. So all kinds of cool stuff. This is probably, I think this thing is the best project that I've made at this point. Um, I'm really happy with it. Um, and the proceeds, so we're auctioning that guy off on Instagram. Uh, and so if you know some rich friends, as far as I know, I think the, the highest bid right now is $850 on that thing, which is mind blowing. So send your rich friends over uh, to Instagram. I'm going to be curious to see how this thing ends because the, the auction period is until the 27th. And so I'm waiting to see, you know, like it jumped up pretty quick the first day. I'm waiting to see if like people scramble at the end, if we're going to go even higher. It'll be pretty cool. So, yeah. Oh, so I should probably go get the link to that video. I can go get a link real quick while we're waiting. Uh, let's see here. Let's see if I can find it. Here it is. It might start on automatically. Luckily, it didn't make noise. All right, so let's, where are we here? Here's the link to it. I'll put a link in the show notes later. So, all right, so we got Melvin. I'm going to pick some colors then. Let's see, we got Blurple coming in. Um, let's do three colors. I'm going to pick, let's see here, Blurple. Hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open up my thingy here. I also have the, oh, you know what I, you know what I think we're going to do? We're going to try the macabre, uh, what is it, uh, macabre blue green. And let's do this uh, Baku red. So let's try some eye candies out. Oh, Will's in there for some blaze orange, so I'm going to pick the macaw. I'm still going with the macaw on that one. And we got blaze orange. So we got three colors on this one. Um, next one, again, so we're, the next one's going to be the the... What are these things called? The sweet gum pods. That'll be another six pen blank mold. Um, so super chatters on the next one. We'll do, you know, however many people super chat on that one. All right. So let me get my little book out here. Let's get things rolling. I'm just going to go to this thing. So what I'm writing in here is just some notes on this casting. I do this for every pour that I do. Um, so I put the date. I'm just calling this like funky pods. So the first one that we're doing is going to be the, I can't, I, I really can't remember what those uh, pods are called. So I'm just going to call them Bucky Balls. I'll know what that is. We're using my six blank mold. So I write the, you know, kind of a, a description. What mold I'm using, we're going to use Slow Set Clear Alumalite. And let's see, so that mold holds, if I was going to pour an inch thick brick in, in my six pen blank mold, I'm going to put about 550, 550 grams or so. Um, and I don't really think that those little bucky balls are going to take up a whole lot. So let's just go with 540. And then we're doing three colors. So let's just split it in three. So that's going to be 180 uh, of each color, 180 grams. And the first one's going to be, let's see, we had Blurple from Melvin. We had Blaze Orange from Will. Let's see here, Blaze Orange. I love that Blaze Orange. That should be a pretty cool combo with the, the Blurple. I don't think I've seen Orange and Blurple yet. And then I'm going to put in some Macaw Green. That's a, a new one. Um, I still haven't gotten my full set. Uh, supposedly I'm getting a full set of the eye candies. Um, but I really like, this is the one that I, I poured with the, the pine cone um, lamp thing, the, the gigantic pine cone blank that we made. So Macaw Green, and this is eye candy. You can get eye candy from um, uh, Turner's Warehouse. And then the other ones, uh, let's see, Blaze Orange is a, a caster's choice, also available at Turner's Warehouse. And Blurple is available on my website. It's blue to purple color shift. And I think on this one, so I, we've done a couple different ways of using this. This time we're going to go with the add a little drop of uh, violet dye, alumilite dye to it. I, that's, a, that's a really good one for, for color swirl stuff. So let's see here. Let's see what's going on. I 
I just want to make sure that I'm not missing anything. Get the shot collar out for Billy. <laughs> yes, Billy, watch out. Okay, so let's see here. I'm just gonna, I think we'll just mix a big cup. I'm just gonna pop this one. I have one, I'm just gonna, I always love taking the, taking the old things out. So this is just a paint mixing cup. And I just let the stuff cure in there and then you can pull it out and toss it or if you wanted to recast it, you could even do that. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna mix the whole amount up first. Uh, and then I'm just gonna dump off a couple cups for the other two colors. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna just go three cups on this. It's a little bit cool. It, it, it's cooled down significantly here today. And in, in this case, I actually just want to go with the three cups because they'll, what ends up happening is if I was going to use that quart mixing cup, 180 grams is not going to be much in, in the bottom of this. And it, it actually doesn't warm up the same uh, speed as the other ones are going to. So we're just going to go with three cups. I'm going to put 90 grams of part A and part B. So like 180 grams total in each cup and then mix them separately. So there's two different ways you can do it, depending on what you're doing. Either way works just fine. All right, so I zeroed my scale. Jacob's here, what's up, man? How's it going? All right, let's see. Yeah, I don't, I'm not a, I, electric, electrical, electrical stuff. It's interesting, but, um, but I have a healthy respect for electricity, <laughs> let's say. All right, so 90 grams of the part A. I'm gonna add the part A to each one of these guys first. So with, with temperatures, you know, depending on where you're at, your shop may start, you know, we're getting into autumn here. Um, your shop may start cooling down and your resins are gonna thicken up a little bit um, as that temperature cools and where they're, they're, you know, where you're storing it and all that stuff and, and the temperature in the shop. So just be aware of that. If it's a little thicker, that's, that's normal. Um, one thing to be aware of, the part B, Alumilite Clears part B can thicken up like this. This is probably a little bit more for like winter time, you know, when it gets pretty cold. Um, it can thicken up quite a bit. So um, but it's not a big deal. If it is super thick, it's not, there's nothing wrong with it. Just warm it up, use a, like heat up a pot of water, make sure your jug's, you know, capped and, and closed. Um, but just warm up the, the jug in, in like a warm water bath and it'll thin out. Again, just that temperature, ambient temperature or, or the temperature of the resin as it's sitting in the jug is, you know, the higher it is, the thinner it's gonna be. So just a little bit of a warning. The resin hasn't gone bad. I threw away half a gallon of, <laughs> of Alumilite when I first got started because I thought it went bad. And I'm not the only one. Other people have done that, but it's, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, as long as it, you mix it together and it, and it you know, cures, then it's still good. All right, so we're sneaking up on 90 here. All right. Uh, one thing that I want to mention also, I appreciate everybody sharing the, 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 um, the post for the, the auction. And it's a charity auction. It's, the, the benefit, it's going to benefit MS Society. Um, but I appreciate everybody who has already shared that. But I would appreciate, you know, if you haven't shared it with friends, if you know somebody that might be interested in bidding, I know that the bids are pretty high right now. But keep in mind, I, I, you know, if you have, the thing is, I have to collect that money from those people. So anybody could technically bid any amount, <laughs> right? Million dollars. And if I can't collect it, then I'm gonna have to go to the next bid down. So there's, you know, even though the bid may be high, I, I recommend if you're, if you wanna bid some amount, go and bid on it. Or, you know, like I said, uh, if you can share with your friends that may be interested in it, I would really appreciate it. We're trying to raise as much money as possible uh, in conjunction with Scott Wishart's. Um, he's, he's doing the fundraiser really. Um, I, I mean, I am too, kind of, but I'm auctioning this piece off and then giving it to him, and he's doing the, the bike MS, where he's going to ride 100 kilometers 
on his bike and he's also doing fundraising outside of that and i think he's already raised thousands uh, himself and so and then there's a bunch of makers out here that are um, making projects and then au auctioning the project off to also go to his fundraising so it's a pretty cool little deal i'm, I'm very uh, lucky that i could be a part of it i'm glad he asked me i'm glad that i was able to get that thing done <laughs> I don't know that you know like there's there's a lot more writing on that one. I needed to make sure that I got that thing done and good <laughs> because it, it was yeah, I needed to be able to sell it, you know. All right, so I usually have a pump on this, but I'm almost out of resin uh for what I'm, you know, in my jugs. And I'd rather not I just have a a, a rule, a, a system kind of thing. Um when I'm done with a 10 gallon kit, then I clean out the jugs and I put new pumps on. So I don't really want to put a pump on this thing. So I'm just going to kind of wing it here. I don't really like pouring out of the jug too much, but we'll just, I'll, I'll deal with it. I'll be okay. For me, it's harder to sneak up on the number sometimes. It's faster to just pour out of the jug, but it's also kind of, you don't want to go over. Ooh, 89 little trick to sneak up so like i'm at 89.7 i want to add a little bit more well grab yourself a small little cup it's really hard to you know this this jug i just filled it so it's like a gallon of resin kind of hard to sneak up on things when you got a gallon of resin that you're pouring out of but a little cup you can pour a couple grams a couple tenths of a gram even pretty easily all right so we got oh shoot I dumped my, I dumped that one. I knocked it over. One of those days, guys. Just one of those days. Clumsy of me. So the problem is the clock is already ticking on this one that I added. So if you do something like this, you kind of need to hurry up and get things cleaned up so you can move on. Oh, all right. So I've got my mess cleaned up. So I got to add some more resin. I'm just going to toss this whole thing because I don't want to look at that cup. It's making me mad. So we're going to get a new cup. I'm going to add our part A to this guy. Get this out of my way so I don't knock it over too. We'll have plenty of time. I'm not worried. Too bad I wasted all that resin, though. What are you going to do, right? 89, 90. Okay. I'm going to zero that out. We're going to add our part B to this guy. I'm gonna move that out of the way so I don't knock that over. I seem to be in a clumsy mood today. 60, 70, 85. Ninety. I actually did okay on that one. Didn't need to sneak up. Okay, and then zero that out, and let's add ninety to this. I will say, if you do, if you pour, it it does get a little easier as you as the you know the more times you do it. Let's say. So, and I will say the pumps can be kind of frustrating sometimes. They can kind of seize up on you if you don't use them that much. And oh, there we go. I think we're okay. I'll just dump that back. Uh, make sure. So you're seeing me pour this back into the jug. Make sure that nothing, no contaminants or anything like that. If you're going to pour something back into the main jug, make sure it doesn't have anything extra in it. That it's clean. Okay, so we got our three cups. We got three stir sticks, so I'm just gonna mix these guys up one by one. And we'll be good to go. <laughs> I've dumped two cups now. 
I hadn't done it for a long time. I don't know what I don't know what I was doing there, uh, but I dumped like a full cup of, of resin <laughs> the other. And it was maybe I don't know a few weeks ago, and oh man, it was everywhere. It just dumped all over, and it was part A and B. <laughs> and I was like, oh man, I had to clean everything up. Oh well, you know, it happens. All right, so we got one cup done. And just a reminder, the, the clock starts ticking, not, not when you start mixing them, but when you, just when you pour the B and the A together. So this one had been kind of sitting there for a little while. It'll probably start warming up first. Okay, so I just, just want to mention that. So we're going to be mixing colors together here. And what we're going to do is we're going to wait till the end of, the, you know, the, closer to the end of the working time. Um, the resin's going to kind of thicken up a little bit. And uh, the closer you are to the, the end of the working time, when it's actually going to harden on you, um, then, you, you know, your colors will kind of lock in place once it hardens up. But they also just don't bleed as much at the end of the working time. So you wait till that end and it's, you know, when you pour them together, the colors should stay pretty separated. Um, you'll have to kind of play around with it. What I found, I use temperature. So I'll take the temperature of the resin using an infrared thermometer. And thing is, for me, I change the, the, the temperature that I end up pouring at depending on the ambient shop temperature um, and again it has something to do with the viscosity um, so when it's cooler it's going to be thicker which i find the way that i pour things usually i don't need to wait as long but when it's a thinner viscosity it just tends to bleed more and the way that i pour it i end up waiting till a higher temperature in the summer when it's really hot in the shop so now i'm used to pouring when it's hot it just dropped it's only 72 right now in the shop and so I'm going to have to kind of adjust what I normally do. Um, I'm guessing probably around 100 is a good time to pour, maybe 95 even. Eh, probably 100. So one drop of violet dye, and then we're going to put, let's see here, a quarter teaspoon of blurp, and I call this blurp, it's just blue to purple color shift. So I have a quarter teaspoon here. Drop that guy in there. And look at how cool this is. That, that purple dye, it just makes this mixture wicked. You get a little bit of that blue, a little bit of purple shiftiness. Look at that. Not too bad, huh? I'm going to switch to this other view so I, I can show you guys a little bit. Look at that. Isn't that cool? I love the blurple. There's a couple other colors that work okay, but... This one I found, I just really love the results. And so I ended up just buying it in bulk and I sell it on my website, the Blurple powder. All right, so let's wipe this guy off. Uh, now another thing, so it's cooling down in our shops. That means that you're probably gonna have more working time also. Um, the, the warmer it is, the faster things set up. The cooler it is, the more working time you have. So that's kind of nice. I kind of like that personally. We'll do a quarter teaspoon of orange. Again, that's the blaze orange from Caster's Choice. It's a good color. It's one of my favorites. It's a it's a really good orange. Very vibrant. Now, if you're making pen blanks and you want more opaque the way to text uh, test to see you know how opaque is it going to be is just pull a little bit out on your stir stick and if you can see the wood grain through your through the mica powder with just that little bit on there then you need to add more mica all right what's in the cup is not going to be reflective of what it, the pen blank is going to look like after you've drilled it out and turned it down it's much thinner 
So you want to see, you want to have kind of an example of about the thickness, the end thickness that you're going to end up with. And on a pen blank, that's pretty thin. It's a very thin amount. You know, you're talking like a between somewhere between a 16th and an eighth inch or so of actual material. So you need to load up more material. And we'll do a quarter teaspoon of this macaw. Blue green, it's kind of a weird color. Uh, very interesting and unique. I haven't, I don't know of any other, um, I haven't seen this, this color from any other um, mica powder person. So eye candy is the only one that I know of. That looks pretty good. It's, it's a weird kind of odd, it's a bluish green. I, it's hard to tell, hard to explain, but I like it. Okay, so we got our three cups. Let's see what temperature we're at at this point. That one's at 84. I think the blurple was the, that one's 85 or so, 86. Let's see what the orange is, 82.5. So we got a ways to go, 83. All right, so I can, I can breathe a little bit more. Uh, this is one of the reasons why I use Alumilite Clear Slow Set, because you got about a 12-minute working time, and I find that to be excellent. Um, if you were using, I don't usually, I don't do color swirl blanks with like the the slow setting epoxies because you'd have to sit here for 45 minutes or you know 40 uh, before it was ready to, to actually pour, and I don't want to do that. <laughs> it doesn't work for streaming, and it doesn't really work for my schedule. I just don't have the patience to sit around. I'm always worried that because I'm going to go do something else for that amount of time and I'm always worried I'm going to forget and then it'll set up in the cups and you know so yeah the camera focus is funny I know that's why I don't really use that one that much once we start getting into to pouring then I'll switch it you, you can't have both uh, the problem is this camera is not the awesomest picture I can move it back and it would be all right. It, it focuses a lot better, you know? Um, but I really like the, I think these ones, the, the webcams look better. So it'll be all right. It, it focuses. I can set it to not um, constantly change, but uh, I didn't have, I don't know. I, it, it requires testing and I don't want to mess with it right now. Oops, that's the wrong camera. Let's go to this one. So I'm going to show you guys. So here's the orange. Where are we at here? There it is. Looking pretty good. You guys saw the blurple already, but man, I love, that is one of the coolest color combos. And then here's the macaw green. Kind of an interesting, it's, it's like a, uh, I don't know. It's just a really pretty color. I like it. So I think these are going to make some cool blanks. Let's get our temperature gauge out. Let's see here. 92. 93.5. And about 90. So we got a little bit more time to wait here. I think I'll pour around, I don't know, 100 probably, maybe 95 today. I don't know. Let's just go for 100 degrees. We'll pour it there. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to add quarter teaspoon. I got to write my notes down. Uh, the other thing about the notebook is that, you know, if you want to repeat this, you, you, you make sure that you write down how much powder did you put in and all that kind of good stuff. All right. So these little buckyball things. Um, I think that they're going to be fine. There's, there's plenty of room for the resin to get around them. So I think we're just going to drop them in. Uh, if you got something, well, I, I'm not going to do this with the, the sweet gum pods. Um, just shove them in there and then pour resin on it because it's not going to work too well. So, um, but these should be fine. The resin should be able to get around them. No problem. So I'm just going to fill this guy up. The little buckyball things. No clue what they really are. There we go. 
perfect and then we'll just dump our resin on but like i said there's enough air space room for the resin i can just pour over them and the resin will go around them with no problems all right i'm actually going to put this back into the oven here real quick so i don't think we're at 100 yet let's check our resin here I think this one might be the lowest we're at like 96 on that one i think this one should be the highest Oh, that one's at 101. We're ready. All right. So here we go. Let's get this thing in, under the camera here. All right, so I'm, and I'm just gonna kind of pour each color. We're just gonna keep pouring around in the bucket here in the mold. Little by little. I think I probably could have poured a little bit earlier than this, but I still think we're fine. It's still very liquid. The nice thing is if you can pour over something else, you're gonna get a really good dispersal of your, your colors. They're gonna swirl up very well because they're kind of all going in different directions. And that's fun. So you can just kind of have at it at this point. Just keep pouring and pouring. These are going to be pretty cool looking, I think. I think I got more resin than I really need here for this. But we'll just keep filling her up. Now, one thing that could happen, these guys may float a little bit. I'm not that worried. It doesn't look like they're really floating that much. That is one thing that stabilizing can sometimes help with. Um, it'll sometimes um, not make it, uh, you know, sometimes the material won't float if it's stabilized. Sometimes it will still. All right, so I'm going to toss this guy in a pressure pot here. Get this thing rolling, and then we're going to do something with our excess. Uh, you know what? I think what I'm going to do, we're going to do something very simple. I'm just going to pour it in this. We're going to have a little bit of the stopper blank. I'm going to toss it in that same pressure pot. A little bit of a something kind of fun here. That'll fit. Oh, it's kind of squished in there. Yeah. Good enough. Okay. This thing cinched down. And I have a CA Technologies pressure pot. It can go up to 80 psi. I only go to 70 in mine. Uh, but make sure that whatever pressure pot you're using, you're not going over the max PSI on your pot. That is not good. All right, let's see here. So the next one that we're going to do is the sweet gum pods. Should be pretty fun. Hunter orange, yeah. True, very true. Actually, you know what's a good one is the fluorescent orange. Lumilite's fluorescent orange. That's a good one for, for that kind of hunter orange thing. All right, let me see if I missed anything here. More people coming. Nice. Yeah, Halloween colors, definitely. Yeah, Halloween's coming soon. Yeah, I really like that macaw green, too. It's, it's uh, Chad sent me just a few colors. Uh, just to kind of try out a couple of them are pretty much copies of, of certain colors from uh, caster's choice really so you know i was like okay uh, but he sent this macaw green and then the the ufo green uh, but macaw blue green and uh chad i was talking to him about it i was like that macaw is really cool he's like yeah that's my favorite eye candy color so it's a good one it's a good one all right did i miss anything else Liquid diamonds at 200. Yeah, in the summer that might be true. I don't. I don't mess around. 
like I said, I, I, I just don't have the patience for, <laughs> for uh, waiting 45 minutes to pour pen blanks. All right, so I'm going to go spray this guy. Just a, a quick shot of stoner spray, uh, you know, the mold release stuff. I don't have a camera over here, unfortunately, but I'm just, just dusting it. Uh, it just makes it so that when it comes time to demold these, I can basically just drop them out of there. So we're going to toss that guy in the oven. We have our sweet gum pods uh, in the oven. And so what I'm going to do with this one is, let me put a glove on. I just sprayed those things, that, or that, that thing. I don't want to... I don't want to get any mold, uh, you know, mold release on my sweet gum pods. Where is the full size one? There it is. All right, so the the attack plan for these guys because they are a pain. Um, using blue dye instead of I don't know. I actually never tried blue. We can maybe try that. Uh, so let me switch to this view. Okay, so we have a full one here, right? And these ones can be particularly difficult. Um, this is a case where you're kind of better off with a slower setting resin. Probably this temperature in the shop and everything, we got a lot of time unless we're waiting till the end. And this is where you kind of have to make a decision because I just waited until like 102 to pour that and it was pretty thick. Well, you don't really want thick when you're trying to fill little holes up. It, it makes it much more difficult to get the resin in, you know, filling those holes. So this is a case where I'd rather get a little bit of color bleed and pour when the resin's thinner, you know, viscosity. Now, one thing that I've done here is it makes it a whole lot easier to kind of get things filled if there's only half. You can kind of stick these guys down in and, and you'll want to work, you know, move them around. Same thing goes with this, but you really kind of want to have you know, a good amount of resin. This is a case where I would maybe even fill your mold a little bit deeper than normal with resin. Um, and just what you're gonna do is you're gonna put it down in there and move it around and just try and get that resin to fill all of those little holes. It's a pain. And most likely you're still, no matter what you do, you're still gonna have some air pockets in the blanks. But, you know, I, I've gotten pretty good results cutting them in half. That seems to help quite a bit because you're only, you know, one orientation is really all you got to worry about. There's, there's not much to worry about on the bottom. Um, so you can even, you know, you could technically put them in. I find putting it in sideways helps. You don't have as much, you know, on the bottom. Um, but put it in sideways, let it kind of fill up and then kind of move it around. So that's what, it's going to be a little bit different. I don't recommend just sticking these things in there and pouring resin on top of them. All right. So we got Jeff with gold pearl. Um, let's try the blurple with blue. Um, let's let's toss that one in this this time. That'll be kind of fun. And let's see here. I'm gonna switch to this view here. So you can look at me reading the screen. <laughs> the peanut gallery's loud. <laughs> oh man. Scott's here. You got to the cabin. Nice. Uh, the neon. So I, I did the UFO green. I think that's one of the neon or fluorescent. I don't know. I've done this one. Um, th and I don't know if this is neon or fluorescent or, or if that's what you're talking about. The only thing that I will say, it's a really cool looking color. Haven't tried any other colors. It turns out pretty cool, but man, that stuff does not want to mix in into the resin very well. But it is pretty bright. I mean, this thing looks like it's glowing. I don't even know if it's if that camera is really picking it up. Hold on, let's put it on this one. I mean, it, I, I honestly thought that it might glow in the dark. <laughs> it's so bright, but it, it doesn't. Uh, but it's pretty cool. Uh, it just you got to kind of watch what you're doing. Got to kind of watch it. Yeah. So hopefully, I don't know. I'm, I'm hoping that supposedly I'm going to get a whole set of those from Eye Candy, and I think they're coming out with new colors too. Um, they're working on a red that looks really good. Like, you know, blood red is awesome. Um, when, when Caster's Choice came out with blood red, that was the best red that I've ever seen. And I think eye candy is actually going to get a more fire engine red. They're really trying to get something like that. So we got, let's see, what, what color do you want, Jen? 
Let's see if she said here. Flamingo red. Oh, is oh is that one of the uh, um, fluorescents? Yeah, it's very chalky, powdery. Um, I loaded up a ton in, so I made a, I made that handle, and I made a. I was making like a mallet kind of. I had in my mind like a mallet blank. So, I mean, I loaded it up with that stuff and then I realized that it doesn't mix in very well. I literally had to strain the resin. I had to use a strainer to get, I mean, it was just clumps. So you need to kind of be a little careful with that. One of the things that you can do to, um, that can help is add the, the powder to your, like, you know, you know how I had a th the three cups on the first pour and I only added the part A? mix your powder in just to the part a first and that way you have unlimited time to sit there and mix it and get that stuff to kind of mix as well as you can then you add even more resin more liquid and it and it works a lot better um yeah i'm gonna do the blurple with blue why don't you pick another color so we got blurple with blue we got uh gold and then we just need your color and then we'll be good to go Yeah, there's a few other things. So, that, you know, that's not the first time I've run into a powder that was kind of difficult. So I load a ton of the interference powder in for my abalone or the, the, the opal pearl. Um, and, and these things, the interference powders can be pretty clumpy. Um, certain mica powders just are. And I almost wonder, like, sometimes I've gotten like the same color just seems to be clumpy. And I almost wonder if like, if it, if it can absorb moisture, if that makes it a little clumpier, that it seems to make sense. I don't know if that's true or not though. Um, another one is micro pearl from Pearl X. Um, that, this thing is very clumpy. It's almost like, it's like powdered sugar. Um, I don't know. Those are the main ones that, that tend to be clumpy like that. <laughs> what goes with blue and gold? Raspberry, nice, that's a good one. Let's see here. Uh, yeah, cool. So let's see here. So we got, let's see, raspberry pink. That's a good one. You know what? So let me just toss this out here because I really, I want to kind of try this Baku red, which I think is it's either like vibrant pink or it's like, or, or this one, vibrant, uh, raspberry. I think it could go either way. Um, what do you say? Do you, do you mind if we use this one instead, the Baku? Cause I've never used it yet, but it looks, I mean, it's, it's one of these two. It's, it's the same exact thing, I think, but I, I but I don't know for sure. <laughs> right. But I'm pretty sure it's like a, it's pink. So we got that. It looks like the vibrant. Well, I don't know. I mean, it looks, Pretty much the same as that, but I but I haven't tried it yet. So would you be opposed to that? Okay. I, like I said, I really think it's the same exact one. You know, I'm I'm a little bit annoyed. Chad was going to get me a, a a list of what colors are kind of like the same between eye candy and um, Caster's Choice, and he never got that to me. So I'm guessing that this one is probably one of them. Um, so we're doing blurple with blue. We're doing Baku red and we're doing gold. Um, let's let's go with the Illumida. I, I kind of like the Illumidust gold, personally. So let's let's just go with that one. That's another brand that I use the Illumidust ones. Um, they work pretty good too. There are, I, I haven't really met a mica powder that really was terrible. Um, there are a few that don't work with resins. They're not really meant to be used that way, but. For the most part, if you see, if there's something that people resin cast with, then they all kind of work. They're all pretty much, they probably come out of the same factory, honestly. All right, so <clears throat> number two, we're doing sweet gum pods. I know what those are. I know the name of those. We're doing the six blank mold. We're doing slow set clear. And let's see here. So I'm going to go with 550 grams. Yeah. 
I think we're, I think we'll be good. I was I did 540 last time and we had extra, so 540. And then this time we're doing. Let's see. So it's the same thing again. We're gonna go 180 in each cup. We're doing Baku Red, and we'll do a quarter teaspoon of that. We're doing gold. Do a quarter teaspoon of that, and we're doing blurple with blue. I, I don't know why I haven't tried that before. <laughs> I guess I kind of, I like the purple hue, so I was just like, that never really crossed my mind. So this is a good one, blurple plus blue. We'll just add like one drop again of the blue, and we'll see how that turns out. That'll be interesting. All right, so same drill. I'm going to get three cups out. Hopefully I won't knock this one over. That was silly. can't believe I did that. We got our two things there. I need to refill my Blurple. So again, the Blurple is available on my website. Just search for... Oh, Jacob's in. Uh-oh. <laughs> Why do you guys always do this when I look away? Okay, so... Um... That screws all my numbers up. Let's see here. So we're doing... Um, why are they the same? Um, that, that, those are both going to be the same thing. So let, which, which one of you wants to switch? <laughs> What's happening, Nick? Uh-oh, did it freeze? Uh-oh. Oh, no, I didn't. Okay. We're okay. So I was looking at the screen there, and it, I wasn't doing anything. Oh, exploded a disc? Ow. Ouch. That is not fun. How did that happen? Uh, yeah, so and Jacob was asking about the moisture thing. I don't know. Um, it just occurs to me with moisture getting into these micas could make them kind of clumpy. Um, what I would do is, you know, so I, I just kind of keep mine all in this drawer. I would get one of those desiccant things, um, the, the silica gel desiccant doohickey things that, that that takes the moisture out of the you know like a drawer a lot of a lot of tool uh, like hand tool things that are metal um, they sell these little desiccant things that you can kind of stick in your tool drawer and that'll keep them from rusting so that might be a good way to do it i, I don't know I, i'm not sure if that's really the cause or not but it seems like it probably could be <laughs> Well, it's true. Well, you got we got two colors, so one of you guys. So Jacob, pick an, pick another one. Let's do. Uh, let's so I, pewter is a really good color. I don't know which camera. Pewter Illumidust. I this one is a good charcoal, graphite. I think silver, um, gunmetal, all of those combined. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. No, there's only two pours tonight. Actually, I, I'm working on um, doing some testing, so I need to to kind of get back to to doing a little bit of testing. I'm, I I bought the Trent Bosch hollowing system, and I'm just doing a little bit of kind of testing with that setup, um, so I can get used to it, so that I can do the hollowing on that that pine cone lamp blank. Um, and I'm I'm not sure the other thing about it. That's going to be a really heavy blank. Um, so I'm not sure if I need to actually get, uh, you could build one, I'm not going to do that, but, um, get a, um, steady rest to hold that thing. I don't know. I don't know. So anyway, I, I need to kind of play around with that thing a little bit. And I, I, I know I could maybe do that on the stream, but the thing is I really need to focus on how this thing works so that I can <laughs> not blow up that huge blank. It's, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's yakking them, yakking them 
sorry, forgot. I, I gotta I gotta let people know what it actually is though. But we we it's kind of an inside joke from back in the day called Yakinum. Because Yak would always pick platinum. So we just started calling it Yakinum. So let's see, did we get uh let's see, Jacob, um no. So yeah, let me know what color you want, Jacob. We can add another one. I don't mind. We can add as many colors as we want. Uh, and we should be able to kind of get an idea of what that blurple, what the blue does with the blurple. Uh-oh, Jamie's in the house too. Sweet. Are you ready for, let's see, how many hours away is the, are you going to go to sleep before? I'm guessing you're going to get up and, and do your thing tomorrow. Let's see here. Uh, yeah, I got antique copper, and so thank you, Jamie. I appreciate the super chat. What color do you want, man? We're making, we're just about to pour some stuff. We're getting all kinds of colors going. Uh, let's see, what was it? It was antique copper. I got that. So you get to pick a color too, Kim Tippin. What's up? Oh, I just tweaked my neck. I got me. You got me so excited that I threw my neck out. <laughs> oh man. Let's see here. We got a color yet? Let Kim pick. Oh man. Which Kim? Kim Tippin? Or Kim Thomas? Okay. Kim picks teal. Ooh, this is one of my favorites. Actually, this is a good color, so I'm gonna switch cameras. If you, if anybody needs to make something that's like the Tiffany blue, this is, I mean, just without doing any messing around, this is about there. Like you can just scoop this stuff in your resin and, and pretty much call it a day. Like I wouldn't even mess with trying to get it any better <laughs> personally. So good call. So okay, I need I need more room now. Shoot. I'm just going to, we're just going to scratch all of that out because we're redoing this. So number two, nine, 18. Uh, let's see here. So 540 total. And we have, let's see here. How many colors do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six colors. Oh my God. Let's see here. So what is that 90 each? Six times 90. Okay, so now we've dropped down to 90 grams in each cup. And we have Baku Red. We've got Antique Copper. So I, I'm cutting it off. No, Oh, no. <laughs> uh, I look away and people do it. Are you sure you don't want to pick a color? We can add seven. We can do seven. But I'm cutting it off after you. We can't do any more in this batch. No more. Antique copper. But if you want to pick a color, definitely go ahead. I appreciate the support. All of you guys. Pewter. I'm going to do blurple plus one drop blue. We got gold. Let's see. Yeah, gold. Okay, so we've split this in half. So I'm thinking that we can probably do... You're sure? All right, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. All right, so we're going to do an eighth teaspoon of each one of these guys. I think that ought to be enough to make it nice and... Um, make it nice and uh, opaque. So we're going to be pouring this one a little bit sooner. Uh, we may get a little bit of color bleed, but 
I'd rather have that and let the the problem is with this many colors this is not the this is not what I would recommend <laughs> for for doing these things um, it just it makes it more difficult because you, you you have to take a lot of time pouring each one I would recommend probably just doing like one or two colors three at the most um, if you're gonna have stuff that that's gonna need filling uh, it'll just make things a little bit easier no problem we'll get through it but I, it's not the not the best way to go not the not the you know with the sweet gum pods they can be kind of a pain trying to fill them and and you just you run more risk of having voids all right so in this case i don't want to do all these cups let's see one two three four five and i actually am gonna we're gonna dump it all out again having only 90 grams now in this thing it would not be smart so we're going to dump it all into each one of these cups i'm just going to mix the whole thing up though together so that's 270 times two uh, equals the 540 that we need all right all right what a short stint in the vacuum now vacuum doesn't really do a whole lot um, with resin i don't recommend using it um, with a Lumalite clear slow set, there's absolutely not enough time for it to do anything. Um, some resins that may have a longer working time, it may help. I don't even, I really don't recommend it though. It's just messy. Um, pressure is the way to go in most cases. There, I'm sure there's a few people out there, not very many actually, but there's a few people that would disagree with that, I think. Um, but pretty much everybody that has tried vacuum, it was a giant failure. So... Um, I don't, I don't recommend doing that. All right. So we need 270 grams. The problem with vacuum is it expands air bubbles. So you can put it under vacuum, but all it's going to do is make your resin foam up basically, um, which you're going to start out with a giant mess. And then what ends up happening with Alumalite clear slow set, you don't have an, it doesn't, it would not actually remove the air quick enough. Um, before it's set up so it's just it's just not going to work with this resin at all uh, with slow setting resins depending on what types of things what types of solvents and things it has in there it can actually make it boil and, and heat up faster and cure faster than normal so it, it's just it's not a very, very good way to go pressure is really for, for resin casting i think pressure works on everything immediately it doesn't cause foaming and all that kind of stuff and it doesn't accelerate the cure in any way so you're best off doing it that way so 270 of part b here let's see I want to overshoot it here 230 Ooh, 269 see if i can sneak up on it from the jug Playing with fire, guys. Not bad, not bad. I was over just a tiny bit, but we're all right. Not gonna hurt anything. All right, so we got our thing. I'm gonna close off. It's always a good idea to close the, the resin jugs immediately. We're going to mix it all up in this one big cup, then we're going to dump them off. Um, you can be super accurate. I'm going to just measure one out and then just kind of estimate the rest based on that first one. Just to save a little bit of time. All right, I'm gonna call that good. I'm gonna zero this guy out. We're gonna put 90 grams in here. And we're just gonna use that as kind of a basis to estimate the rest of the cups. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just get it kind of close. 
Went over just a little bit on that one. We're at 92, but it's not going to be a big problem. Just to kind of give us some sort of an estimate so we, we can be in the ballpark. Going a little bit lower than that first one because technically we're going to lose a little bit being stuck on the sides of this cup. We'll just go try and go a little bit under so we make sure we get all of them, get resin in all of them. All right. And the reason that I poured that last one out, it just, this these bigger quart mixing cups, if you only had like 90 grams, it would just take forever to warm up. So I don't, I don't really like doing that. All right, so we're gonna do an eighth teaspoon. Where's my eighth? There it is. I lost it. Eighth teaspoon of antique copper going in there. Baku Red Eye Candy. And I think, like I said, looking at that, I think that's about an approximate same thing as either Flamingo Pink or the Vibrant Pink from Caster's Choice. But I'm not entirely sure and I just wanted to kind of test that out so we can kind of see what it looks like. All right, so we're gonna do Blurple. Let's get this guy over here, kind of. We're gonna do an eighth teaspoon of Blurple. And my normally I like to add a little bit of violet dye, but we're gonna try blue. I think that's a good idea. I'm gonna see if it, it's a little heavier to that blue color. Put some of these guys away. And we need an eighth teaspoon of teal here. Gold. This is the, the Aluma Dust, Aluma Lights powder. I like that. It's a pretty good gold. And we need some Yakinum. Okay. We got our powders in. I'm going to get these guys to get out of my way. Popsicle sticks. And I need to add some blue dye to that blurple. So let's mix that in. Let's see what this does. I'm going to switch to this other view now. Let's add a little bit of blue. Just one drop. Get the stick out of the way. You guys see that, sort of? One drop of blue. Oh, I lost my cap. Mm, yeah. It favors the blue shade. And, but you still get a little bit of purple. Can you guys see that? It, the purple's very... Yeah. Yeah, so it does work that way. I don't know if you guys can see the purple. If I can get that camera view, can you see it? I'm not sure if you're seeing it, but it does do that. It's 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 blue and then it shifts to purple a little bit more slightly. All right, so I'm going to get going here. I don't want to mess around too long cuz we want to pour this a little bit earlier than normal since we have so many colors. And this time what we're going to do, so this is, this is, here's where it's difficult when you're, when, when we're doing these, these, uh, sweet gum pods, I really recommend that you push them down into the resin. And that's why 
it's problematic doing this many colors with it also. Um, I, I kind of forgot about that part of it because we're going to have to move it around. So the, these things are going to probably just be, I don't know. We'll see how this turns out. Um, I would recommend doing less colors probably. <clears throat> One color might be the best way to go with that. A good one is like uh, glow in the darks are a good one to go with. But we have to actually push them down in and move them around a lot. So you have to. Yeah. Let's see how these turn out in the end. Even with like three colors, it's still kind of the same issue. You just kind of end up mixing the, the resin around. But I don't really recommend just dumping resin on top and being done with it because it really just doesn't work out that well. Let's do cap. Okay, so let's get our temperature gauge. Let's see where we're at here. I'm going to go with this one. It's a little bit more full, so that should be at the higher end. So we're at 91 already. I think that we should probably start pouring this right now. <clears throat> Okay, and I like I said, I do realize that we're probably going to get a lot more bleeding on this but, but because we're pouring it early and we're going to be shifting it around. But actually, it's, it's staying pretty separated. And again, that's the difference between pouring when it's 85 degrees in my shop and pouring when it's 70 All right, so kind of going fast. It's going to be a jumble of color anyway. <laughs> so I'm just not that worried about it. If we get a little bleeding, we, we get a little bleeding. But I think they're still going to be cool. You know what I mean? It's just trying to keep crisp color, <clears throat> excuse me, colors is kind of futile when you're, when you're sticking those, sticking something in there and having to move it around. Look at that, seven colors. Seven colors, guys. All right, so we got our little sweet gum pods. Here's how we're gonna do it, all right? You wanna kinda push it down in and try to let it fill up with resin. Now you can see this is gonna take a little while. But I do find that the halves work a little bit better than the full ones. I do have a full one. So here's the full one. Here's how you need to do this with, with a full gumball pod is you, you have to like basically rotate it around. I was actually just talking to Casey uh, Martin. We were talking about this on the podcast. And so this is what he also does. You just got to keep moving it around. But obviously you guys can see the problem with that is you're going to, you know, mix your resin up a lot. And you only have so much time. It's, it's a tough situation because you only have so much time. And even if you're using, um, you know, a slow setting resin, if you wanted to get color swirls, you still have to wait till the end to keep the colors separated somewhat. So it's kind of like, how do you do that? It's, it's, you're really best off going with like a one color or maybe clear. Uh, and that way you, you, you don't really have to worry about it. You could maybe even do it like a multi-step thing, try and fill each one of those things individually before you cast them. That could be, uh, if, you, if, you, if you're patient enough to do that, that might work. I'm not. So I don't think I'd ever do that. I'm going to toss some of these pine cones in as well. So we're we're going to have a little bit of a mix of stuff, but 
Problem is I'm kind of running out of time here, I think. I, I feel like the clock is ticking, <laughs> you know. So the, the advantage to doing like one color is you could just pour that in the mold straight away once you mix your color in or whatever. Uh, if, you, if you were doing color or if it was clear, you can just mix it up. And once the, you know, once you've mixed part A and part B together, then just put it in the mold and you're good to go. Yeah, we're, it's pretty, it's pretty hot. We're going to, we're going to call it there. We're already at 1.30. So I'm just going to kind of push things around a little bit more. It's fairly filled up, but I did have to add a lot of pine cones. And... <clears throat> toss it in there. I'd rather just toss it in now, make sure that we get something rather than me keep playing with it and we totally blow the pour. Because I'd like to see how they turn out. I think it'll be pretty cool looking. A little bit more mixed up than, than if you were going for a straight color swirl, obviously, though. Okay, so we add our, whoa, what? Dyes jumping out. Suicidal red dye. <laughs> Uh-oh. I got resin on my gun. Whew. So you can see that that's, that gets a little bit kind of complicated, especially with a short, you know, short working time resin. You can kind of feel the clock ticking very quickly. <laughs> it comes and gets you. Oops, I don't want to use acetone on that. Let me, I, I got to get this stuff off my... Got a little bit of resin on my gun. Acetone will melt a lot of plastics. So I, I recommend if you need to do this to get something off of like a, you know, temperature gun or whatever, um, use the denatured alcohol instead. It won't like ruin the plastic on the thing. It's a little bit milder. Okay, so we got 70 PSI in there. So those guys, we're using slow set clear. Uh, and I need to wipe off my stick really quick. So that it's ready to go. Uh, we're using Alumilite clear slow set. So a lot of people always ask, how long do you have to leave it in the pressure pot? And typically, as long as you've got a, a reasonably you know, significant enough amount of resin, like 100 grams, 200 grams. Um, uh, usually whatever the demold time is on the jug or in the instructions is going to be what you need to leave it in there for. And so in this case, for Lumilite Clear Slow Set, see it says two to four hours there. And right, right below that also, let's see if I can... It says uh, two to four hours, and then it says 100 gram mass at 75 degrees Fahrenheit. So, you know, that's, that's what these numbers are, are, are assuming. Um, so two to four hours. So I probably I could leave it in there for two hours or so, pull it out, and it's going to be perfectly fine. All right. Uh, so let's see here. So I probably won't demold these tomorrow like I usually do because... Uh, I only have an hour to do that, um, uh, the pen turning thing, my, my demo uh, for the virtual craft fair. So I'm not going to mess around with doing that. I'm going to try and get things going like quick so that I can actually get through the, the turning of the pen and all that stuff. Um, so I'll probably just post pics when, I'm, when, I, when I demold these guys, but I can't wait to see how they turn out. I think they're going to be pretty cool. The first ones, definitely. I think we, we nailed the colors on that, and the pour was good. We didn't you know, mess the colors up. I think we're going to get crisp colors. Second one might be a little bit more kind of you know, mixed up a little bit with the colors, but I think it's going to be pretty awesome. Hopefully, the only thing is hopefully I did enough messing around to get those little you know, holes and stuff filled uh, so we don't have air pockets. Um, but I just, like I said, I want to warn you, even if we did one color, <laughs> let's, let's say we had like the perfect thing. We were using a slow setting resin, one color or just clear. And, and we sat there and filled and, you know, made sure on each one, you still may get some voids in these things. They're just notorious for that in the end, uh, you know, end blanks or whatever. So don't feel bad if you have voids. There's not a big deal if you get a void in a pen blank. You just need to fill it with some CA glue. Um, so not, not too bad. So let me stop real quick, see what everybody's up to in here. 
Um, that's all we're going to do for the casting. Like I said, I, I really want to get a little bit more time with the, the Trent Bosch hollowing stuff. So I, I'm kind of familiar with that when I start working on that pine cone lamp that I'm looking at and I've been looking at for a long time. Uh, but I, I want to get, you know, familiar with the tools. I don't want to do it on a live stream because I haven't done that yet. So down the road, uh, we'll have a video up and I'll probably play with that a little bit more. Um, so far, I'm very happy with that system. I already had the elbow tool, the Tim Yoder thing, and it works fine. There's nothing wrong with it, but I won that. <laughs> actually, I was kind of lucky. I won that at the SWAT, actually at SWAT, uh, symposium a few years ago. And so it just, why was I going to buy another one? But I always wanted to try the Trent Bosch system out and I am extremely happy with it so far. So if you're looking for a hollowing rig setup, um, the Trent Bosch one is really fabulous. It's a really good one. So let, let me stop, see if there's any, if I missed anything. Uh, let's see here. Unicorn poop. <laughs> yep. You're going through cactus juice like crazy. It's very, you know, once you start getting into coloring, uh, you know, dye stabilizing wood, I gotta be honest, that, you know, you can go through a lot of it because you need like, pretty much, uh, I don't know, the way I do it, like I get a gallon for every color that I want to do. You know, you need to be able to have enough to fill your, your you know, whatever your chamber is, the, the wood that you're putting in. So not as bad if you're doing like pen blanks, but if you have a lot of wood, then you need a lot of cactus juice. So it's, it can be a little expensive. I feel you there. I just bought two gallons myself because I got to get some pine cones stabilized. I don't think I missed any, uh, let's see, Jacob. So can you pour two colors first? Yeah, you could probably do it that way, I guess. That's not a bad way to do it. You're still going to get like, I don't know. You're still going to get a jumble of colors underneath there, I think, you know. Yeah, time is a tough one with, with, what, with the resin that I have. And again, you know, a lot of people would say, well, why don't you just use something that has an hour working time? Uh, yeah but if you like like with liquid diamonds um if i you know if you started pouring that right away i mean it would just literally be just whatever you know you may as well just mix it all up in a cup at that point because it's just going to be just bleh, not not good looking so you still have to wait till some point you know so you still don't get like 45 minutes or 60 minutes or whatever it is so, it's just it's a tough one Oh, there's one, Chris. If you have them sitting in clear slow set before putting it into the colors, yeah, that might, like I was saying, you could maybe try and fill them <clears throat> somehow. Uh, the thing is, I mean, even if you had them sitting in clear, I don't know. Um, I th I don't know. I know. I I think that you're better off if you really want to do it that way. I think you're better off getting a syringe and like filling each one of those things which I'm, no, no thanks. <laughs> I'm not doing it. I will not do it. Let's see here, is my website down? There's a warning. Uh, no, website's good. Now, somehow I did have uh, McAfee decided to blacklist me, which came up as a problem for people that like use the Avast, um, uh, what what should we call it? Virus thing, and I don't know how they did that. We had them recheck it, and it's not. I'm not blacklisted anymore. So um, I'm really happy that uh, McAfee decided to screw with my business for no apparent reason. Because there's no there's no viruses. There like if if my website had a virus or anything like that or malware, my web host would just shut my site down. So you know McAfee doesn't need to check it because I'm I'm being monitored all all the time by the hosting company. Um, and so we, we did a full check on it, sent them, you know, the, the, our findings to McAfee and then they took me off. So that might be what it was. Um, but, uh, I don't know. Yeah, no, it's, it's better not be blacklisted anymore. Um, I'll have to double check that, but no, I mean, there's nothing wrong with my site. So that really makes me mad. I mean, it's, it's to the point where I'm losing money because of McAfee, I guarantee you. I mean, people are literally, they're getting a, a warning from their computer um, that says that my site has malware or whatever. I, I, frankly, it doesn't even, we don't even know what they found 
And it really makes me mad. Um, and it's to the point where I might need to get a lawyer because thanks, McAfee. <laughs> Why don't you get a better checker? Like, what are you supposed to do having a website that they blacklist? There's no recourse. They just, they just tell everybody that it's bad when it's not. So I'm sorry, <laughs> bad subject, but there's nothing wrong with my site. I totally understand if you don't want to, tr- if you don't trust that. Uh, I, you know, I, but it it should be fine at this point. You shouldn't be getting that anymore. So (laughs) the internet knows that I'm so, I'm suspect. I don't know. So anyway, guys, I think that's about it. I apologize for being dark and angry at the end there, but it just, it really pisses me off because it's been going, I don't know how long it's been going on, but people, you know, there's nothing wrong with my site and people were telling me that their, my website is... (laughs) blacklisted and i'm like what uh so we had to figure it out so anyway guys i hope you have a wonderful weekend and then tomorrow like i said we're going to be turning up a pen it'll just be kind of simple but i'm going to kind of go through all the steps for pen turning uh for my demo and again that starts it's beginning at 2 p.m pacific time tonight and i think jamie is kicking it off right yeah it starts with jamie so jp would work Head over to his channel at 2 a.m. Did I say 2 p.m.? I meant 2 a.m. Pacific time. Um, so <laughs> for, for those of you who are night owls, 2 a.m. is when things kick off. I don't think that I'm going to be up this time, unfortunately. Um, but then I'm going to kind of get up and start kind of popping in during the day to, you know, people that are going, you know, in, in the whole schedule at the end. Let's see here. Uh, let me get a link. The whole schedule is right here. So you guys can check out and see what's happening um everybody's thing and i've also posted uh uh you know on instagram i have the schedule and on facebook as well so and the way it works you're going to go to each individual maker's youtube channel and we just kind of skip around and you know hopefully you guys will see some new youtubers and some new makers doing some pretty cool stuff that you maybe didn't know about Uh, and we still have a few of the the people that did it last time as well i am one Uh, i'm on at 3 p.m pacific time like my normal uh you my normal stream time um, so over here at my channel, so it should be pretty fun. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I hope, uh, I hope you guys enjoy seeing it and I'm going to be turning up one of the, the most recent packing material blanks that we made the, the, the mixed color, the, the one I did at the end. So I'm pretty excited to see how that turns out, uh, turning a Virage pen. So it should be pretty cool. So anyway, guys, I hope, let's see, let me stop real quick. Cause I, the, things are coming in, coming in here. Uh, so yeah, and I'll, I'll post pics of these blanks this weekend. Hmm. Thanks for letting me know, Doug. I'm going to have to possibly get a lawyer and go after a vast, a vast matey. It's kind of funny because I don't even use, I don't see the point of using virus stuff anymore. It doesn't, I, I don't know. I haven't used one for a long time. Uh, let's see here. All right. So I don't think I missed anything, uh, until next time guys. So, uh, like I said, tomorrow's the next stream and then we'll see what's going on. I'm not sure what the schedule is going to be next week. We'll have to kind of see what's going on. Uh, but it should be pretty fun. And don't forget to share the, the X-Wing Sphere, uh, auction, my, my post on Instagram with anybody that, that you might think, uh, would want to, uh, put a, put a bid down on it. So, Anyway, guys, thanks for joining the fun. Thank you to all the, uh, my, my brain's kind of messed up today. That smoke from, from all the fires is killing me. Uh, thank you to all the super chatters who supported the show and picked some awesome colors. I can't wait to see how they turn out. Uh, but I hope you guys have a wonderful evening, and I will see you guys tomorrow during the virtual craft show.